so good morning everyone uh, today we will study self excited braking of induction motor okay so this is the circuit diagram now three phase induction uh, braking of three phase induction motor so this is another type type of dynamic braking okay so here what we have uh, this is input three phase AC line, okay, and this is our induction motor, and three capacitors are connected that is permanently to the <coughs> induction motor. Okay, so these capacitor values are same. This is C, and here switch is connected. Okay, so if you want to break this motor, we Take this switch out, and uh, this capacitor is connected to this induction motor. Okay, so in this method, uh, the three capacitors are kept permanently, okay, connected permanently uh, connect across the motor terminal, and the value of C is uh, chosen so that uh, when disconnected from the line. Motor work as a self excited generator. Okay, so when we take this uh, switch out, uh, so this uh, capacitor will give the necessary excitation to this induction motor. Okay, so capacitor will provide the necessary excitation to the motor. So this capacitors will give the necessary excitation to the motor, and that's why it is known as self excited. Okay, so uh, and that time uh, this motor will behave like a generator. Okay. So. Uh, when this motor is running uh, in normal condition, if you want to break this motor, we dis disconnect it from the uh, three phase AC mains and it is connected to this three uh, capacitor bank. Three capacitor bank. Okay. So now we do a draw magnetization curve. Okay. So this is graph between E and I M or I C. Okay, so we will draw a magnetization curve. Okay, so magnetization curve will be like this. Okay. So this breaking is only applicable for no loop. No load transmission. So this is the magnetization characteristics of the motor for no load. Okay. So this is no load. And uh, current through capacitor can be represented by this line. Okay. Let's suppose this curve is A and this is B. Okay. So this is current through capacitor. Or capacitor load. Okay. 
and bring the same step down. Let's suppose these two curves intersect each other at point C. So this will be the operating point. Okay. So this is the operating point. So uh, the excitation of this induction motor is quite uh, similar to the shunt DC generator. Okay. Is quite similar to this. So let me this data use voltage for X. So let's suppose E is voltage induced per phase and IC is capacitor current. Okay. So when uh, capacitor is connected to induction motor, so current flow to this capacitor, it is given by this curve B and slope of this curve will be equal to 1 upon omega C capacitive uh, reactance. Okay, so slope of this load line, capacitor load line is 1 upon omega C. Okay. So the current through capacitor IC IC is equal to uh, line voltage divided by capacitor reactance. We have taken uh, E as stator induced voltage per phase. So, so line voltage will be 2, 3 into E. Whole divided by capacitive reactance is 1 upon omega C or equal to E root 3 omega C. So IC is equal to root 3 into omega into C. Okay. So this current will flow through the motor. is leading current. Okay. Capacitor current is leading current and current taken by this motor will be leading. Okay. So the magnetizing current this is IM is equal to IC. So M is magnetizing So the capacitor current will be equal to the magnetizing current of the induction motor. Okay. So uh, since uh, this induction motor has some residual magnetism, so there will be a voltage build up like this due to So this will 
to give you voltage builder as uh, as shunt generator a DC shunt generator okay and this will be the electric current this will be your electric and finally settle up settle down at full load speed and this is full load voltage okay this will be So now uh, this induction motor will have some induced voltage due to this induced current, okay, uh, induced voltage and when current flow through this induction motor, so there will be uh, I square R noise, okay, due to this in induced current. So due to this loss, the motor power will be dissipated as I square R. And motor will gradually disaccelerate. Okay, so motor will gradually disaccelerate. Okay, so motor will disaccelerate. So speed will come. Uh, speed is decreasing. So EMF also decreases, and current also decreases, and frequency also decreases okay. so due to braking uh, there will be a decrease in speed so if speed decreases omega r so induced voltage also decreases induced current will also decrease and frequency will also decrease okay so uh, now there will be a new my digestion curve due to decrease in speed, voltage, current, and so let us suppose this is curve AB. So a new my digestion curve will be obtained like this for reduce frequency and this capacitor load line the slope is 1 upon omega c that is 1 upon 4 pi fc so frequency is decreasing so this slope will increase okay now slope will increase as frequency is decreased this slope will increase okay and now we have a new operating point so this is E. Okay. So the operating point is uh, shifted from point C to point E. So there will be a new operating point that is point F. Okay, so the voltage induced will be so now this is induced voltage. So this voltage is let's suppose this is E1 and now reduced value is E2 and is IC1, this is IC2. So IC2 is less than IC1, current is reduced and voltage induced E1 is greater than E2. So current is decreased. Okay. So now uh, current is decreased. Now this I square also will also Get okay, now I square R loss will be decreased because current is decreasing and the baking torque also decreases. Okay. 
and gradually the motor speed will come to zero. So uh, below uh, some critical speed, okay. So again, uh, speed will decrease, okay, and induced voltage decrease, current decrease, frequency decrease. So this magnetization curve will come downward, okay. So this will be like so this will be. New magnetization curve, and as frequency is decreasing, the slope will increase. And let's suppose this is increased like this. So, as you can see, this is the magnetization curve, saturation curve, and this is load line. Okay, and there is no intersection between these two curves. Okay, so there will be no uh, intersection between this and there will be no excitation. Okay, so, so below this uh, critical speed, there will be no self excitation. Okay. So some external resistance are connected across the stator terminal in order to increase uh, the taking torque. Okay. So external resistance is connected the stator in order to increase. Okay. And to uh, dissipate uh, some generated energy uh, in outside the machine. Okay. So this is scheme is uh, rarely used because if when breaking torque is zero, the speed is very high. Okay, so this is uh, self-excited braking of induction motor uh, using uh, capacitor. Okay, so what we do uh, if motor is running with normal speed, if we want to break this motor, we disconnect this induction motor from the supply and we connect it from the uh, capacitor brand like this. Okay, so this capacitor provides necessary excitation to the induction motor, and at that time uh, it behaves like a generator. Okay, and uh, uh, this all operation, uh, the excitation of this induction motor is similar to the excitation of DC shunt motor. Okay, and uh, this is the excitation curve of this self excited motor. And it is the current to the capacitor. Okay, and where these two uh, intersect is the operating point, gives the load voltage, and uh, and as uh, speed decreases, the induced voltage decreases, current decreases, and frequency decreases. This magnetization curve comes down, and this slope of the capacitor load line increases. Okay. So and in, uh, so at a certain speed, these two curves will fail to intersect, and there will be no self excitation. Okay. So uh, this method is rarely used because when breaking torque is uh, zero, uh, the speed is usually very high. Okay. So now we will move to the last dynamic breaking which is zero se sequence breaking okay
next last topic in breaking of induction motor is zero sequence breaking. So in this case, so we disconnect the stator of the induction motor. And connect in series across either a single phase AC supply or DC supply. Okay. So, sex connection is known as zero sequence connection. So what we have done, uh, we have disconnected the stator of this delta connected induction motor and connected it across a single phase AC supply or DC supply. Okay. So uh, this such connection is known as zero sequence because current in stator winding are cofaser. Okay. So current. Stator winding are four Okay, that's why it is known as uh, zero sequence connection. The MMF by zero sequence current produce a magnetic field. So, the MMF produced by this current will be 3 times of MMF. It has a number of holes. So, the number of holes. For this machine. For which. Okay. So, this will be. Three times of the number uh, number of poles of the machine for which it is actually warm. Okay, so if it is star connected. Zero sequence of star connected stator. So, three stator windings are connected in series.
So this is for star connection and this is for delta connection. Okay. If we are giving uh, AC supply, so MMF, this, this MMF probably by this current, this four diesel current will be pulsating in nature, okay? And uh, when AC supply is applied, is pulsating in nature and when AC supply is given MMF is displacement Now if we draw the speed or characteristics for zero sequence breaking. of AC is limited up to one third of the synchronous speed. So motor uh, will work momentarily uh, in regenerative braking mode, okay? And generator generated energy is supplied to the source, okay? So with AC supply, braking could be used up to one third of the synchronous speed. So unlike uh, dynamic braking, DC dynamic braking, it uh, doesn't require um, large resistance, large rotor resistance. So it can be used for spiral free induction motor and slip free induction motor. For both the induction motor, you can use this type of braking. Okay. And if we draw its connection diagram, okay. So usually the connection is very simple and we use our delta connections because these are the same.
that means this is C1, C1, C, P1, P, A1, and normal operation we connect A to A1 then B to B1 and C to C1 and B so this is or normal operation ok and for zero sequence connection so A is connected to A1 and now we connect B to C to C1 and B2 and C2 e. okay. so this is the zero sequence so for zero sequence A is connected to A1 B is connected to now C1 and this is this will be short circuit in that case okay. then if we draw its sequence circuit diagram for zero sequence so this will be this sequence resistance and indicate connectors per phase sequence So this is for forward rotating field and this is for backward rotating field O minus S. Okay. And this flip amount is the speed of the induction motor for this supply is restricted up to NS upon 3. So corresponding slip will be from NS upon 3. So for dynamic breaking, uh, you see speed of characteristics. DC breaking, uh, 
is available for entire speed range. Okay, there is no limitation for uh, DC supply, but if we use the AC supply, it is limited up to ns omega s. So, what, uh, what are the advantages? Uh, the heating is more uniform okay, as the all uh, windings are connected in series and the full line voltage can be used without any serious overloading. Okay. So, zero sequence operation produce motor torque. So, zero sequence uh, produce motor torque. When the speed is less than, when the speed is less than omega m is less than omega x y, so this is the condition. Okay. So zero sequence operation connected induction motor can be used where speed reduction is 67 percentage. Okay, one upon three percentage is occasionally required. Okay, so when uh, a speed reduction of 67 percent is required, so we go with this type of connection, zero sequence connection. Okay, so this is all about zero sequence breaking. Okay, so any doubt? Okay, thank you class.